Yo, what's going on guys? Right, so we're going to be learning how to make um, a simple 3D SD card mock-up in DaVinci Resolve Studio. So what you want to do is come to your effects, come to your fusion composition, and for the sake of this we're going to be using a 1920 by 1080 resolution, but if your computer can handle it, um, go ahead and make this 4K. Um, so once you've done this, let's jump straight into the fusion project. Um, and you're going to come to your media pool and drag your OBJ file which is an SD card, I will leave a link to this in the description. You're then going to come to a merge, type in merge 3D, a renderer, and then you're going to connect the renderer to the media out. Then you can sort of see this, and we'll adjust that in a minute. Click on the merge 3D, add a spotlight, and add an ambient light. Come to your renderer 3D, enable lighting and shadows. Now come back to your FBX mesh 3D and let's scale this down. Come to your transform and just drag the Y axis till we're centered. And now I'm going to come to my spotlight and drag this back a little bit uh, and change this angle here. So we start to see some definition um, within the frame. I'm going to change this to a different color for the sake of this. The ambient light, let's make black. So we start to get those shadows um, within the SD card. I'm just going to put the spotlights directly under. Now you want to come to your FPX Mesh 3D, click Control and Space and type in Replace Material. Now the good thing about this is within the effects on DaVinci Resolve, Within templates, you can come to fusion, come down to shaders, and they've got a load of different shaders already built in. I will be coming out with a shader pack soon, something with more detail um, and some cooler different effects. But for the sake of this, let's use this chrome one here. I'm going to drag that and drag that onto replace material. Once you've done this, you want to ungroup. And you can start to see how this is built. What I'm going to do is add a merge between the transform and the rectangle. And I'm going to come up to tools and type in plasma. I'm going to drag the plasma onto this. So we get this cool metallic um, looking effect here. Now I'm going to come to ward. I'm just going to click off slightly and type in bump map. And then I'm going to come to my media pool and drag on my bump map. This is just a texture I found on the internet. There's plenty out there. Go have a look. I'm not sure where I found this one, um, but I'm sure you'll find a good one. Drag the media into the bump map and the bump map into the ward. Now this might take a little while to update. You can't really see anything at the moment. But as we increase the bump map, you'll start to see the details come to life um, on our SD card. Now we've got this big white sort of gap here. I'm just going to come into the plasma. Uh, I'll come into the fast noise. I'm just going to change this white within the middle. And add some more definition by changing the color here. I'm going to come down to our spotlight, drag this on and just drag this back further. It's a lot of experimental uh, and experimentation going on here so play around and see what looks good. But let me show you what we've got already just by rotating this and this looks incredible. If you want to change the shine and the reflection, you come to reflect base and you can adjust this. But for the sake of this, let's just leave this as it is. What I'm going to do is after this dissolve, type in CC and come to color corrector. And this is where you can change your colors. Remember, you've got a light on here as well, so you can change the intensity. 
up the saturation. Change the hue. This looks pretty cool. Sort of a pinky, uh, pink color. If you want to change the overall color after, you add another color corrector here and we can change it like this. Up the saturation. Yeah, play around it. You can, you can make it full on uh, single color, like very chromatic, two tone. Or you can uh, give it that sort of thermally looking effect. I'm just going to reset this. Just going to come back to the fast noise and try and locate that green. Now in the um, plasma, you can change the scale. And on the left, as you can see, you're starting to get uh, this very chromatic sort of look going on. You can change it even more, and you get an even more chromatic look. It all, it all depends on taste. But let's find a sweet spot here. This looks kind of cool. Let's keep it like that for now. Now we're going to come to our FBX Mesh 3D, type in transform. And we're going to animate backwards. So you're going to come up to about 90 frames. Um, select all your keyframes on the transform 3D node. Come to the beginning and bring the Z forward. And what I like to do is just drag the Y a little bit right and the X a little bit left. So you get something like this. And this is how it should appear. Now, as you can tell, it's sort of losing the light. So we want to bring the light back even further. So you come into your left and drag the blue notch here and just drag it further back. So we'll keep on doing that until Drag the ambient light as well. Maybe on the spotlight we can adjust the cone angle. Now on the transform, I just want to make sure you can see the details on it as it comes in. I'm just going to just going to rotate And you can see the bump map is way too heavy. So I'm just going to bring this down. Bring something like this. You can also add another spotlight. Drag this in. And we can sort of have it facing downwards. If we come to our transform and rotate it a little bit like so and face it like this change the cone angle bring the intensity down
So if you're getting these weird textures, we it is our plasma, as you can tell. Maybe just lift that up a bit. Now you can finesse all these details later, but the um, coloring and all of these are all just within the shaders. So mess around with these and um, you can adjust everything to your liking. Now that we've done that, we can come to our spline and let's click on our transform 3D. Click on this little thing here, highlight this and make it all eased in, which is this button here. Now let's go have a look at this. Now I'll drag that up to V2. I'm just going to add in these embers. Um, we're going to add all the finessing and the, the final details. So come to adjustment. Add a clip in, adjustment clip. And you want to type in tilt, shift, blur. Now I'm going to probably start the comp from here. Just so we don't get that cutting off at the beginning. Now on the fusion comp, you want to type in glow and add your glow. Type in alpha limit effects. Bring the shine threshold down. Um, and then duplicate your adjustment clip, delete the tilt shift blur, and then add a glow onto the adjustment clip, and then we'll get an overall glow. Do something like this, very subtle. Now once again, duplicate the top one, delete the tilt shift blur, and come to film grain, add your film grain in. I bring the opacity up. I come to 35, 400T, and then increase the strength um, and bring down the shadows. It's still quite strong, so I'm just going to bring the opacity down. Now, one more little trick, come to the top, delete your film grain after you've duplicated your adjustment clip, type in aperture diffraction. I'm just going to actually add uh, the film grain to the layer above and bring this one down. And that looks pretty cool. I'm going to keyframe the brightness. So as it goes on, it just gets a little less uh, in your face. Um, and then you can add one more adjustment clip on um, if you want to adjust all the colors. So I would add the film grain above again and just put this in between. Just... Um, Unable the adjustment clip so you can access this one. Make sure your node is on the node tree, and then we can sort of fiddle about with all the colors. If I up the saturation and the hues, start to get some really interesting looks. You can alternatively keyframe this as well. So on your 
node you can come to your corrector add static keyframe and then sorry we want to add dynamic keyframe push this on a bit further and then you can adjust the saturation and like so it will change color come back and add your grain back on I'm just going to adjust that slightly I'm just going to bring the uh, the strength down a bit and that's pretty much it and that looks pretty damn cool what you can also do is go into the fusion composition you can literally just swap any obj file in and out and it will automatically change you may have to come to your um, controls and bring the scale down really small because a lot of these OBJ files are quite big so you just scale it down like you can see this is 0 0.006 um, and you'll see it directly there you can also um, delete that and add a text 3d we drag the text in let's do a B for example just come to sort of a metal font a gothic font and come to your extrusion extrusion depth um, maybe come to shading and click off um, this use one material and you should like so have a really cool 3d text maybe come to your bevel de um, bevel depth and do um, it's a bit extreme you will have to adjust slightly the camera movements and the keyframing but I'm just saying how, um, how easy it is to swap in and out um, let's go back just going to go back to the OBJ file hopefully it's there <laughs> And there it is and that's pretty much it guys so a really simple and quick and easy way to get a cool um, looking SD card or cool looking object within DaVinci Resolve Studio um, I will be coming out with a Chrome tool quite soon um, and potentially I will release this for free as well um, this project so um, stay tuned like comment subscribe all that sort of stuff and I'll catch you in the next one